Leading Safer Teams is my safety keynote. And uh, it's about inspiring commitment versus compliance. Basically, we want people to be safe, not because they'll be caught breaking the rules, but because they truly care about themselves, their teammates, their families, their company. And this is where I not only use adventure racing footage, but I also bring a lot of my firefighting background and some of those stories and videos. So the bones of the safety keynote is an acronym for COMMIT. It's about resolving those conflicts between how we view ourselves and what is actually safe. The O is about creating ownership and buy-in and the fact that our safety is on us and the safety of our friends and our colleagues is on us. And we have 100% buy-in of that. We educate ourselves so that we can be that hero to our teammates, not the hero that goes in after, some, after an accident has happened, the hero that prevents accidents from happening. And that involves a lot of ownership and a lot of education and taking that upon yourself to be that person. The M, the first M, is measure and mitigate risk. Because in a lot of cases, the most important thing we can do is measure whether the risk is something that we should even be taking when it comes to safety. And then how do we mitigate those risks? I talk about how fire captains and chiefs um, evaluate and manage hazards when they pull up on scene. We actually have a mental checklist that we go through to ensure that we're doing the right thing. Uh, evaluating the scene, then taking, uh, figuring out what our resources are, what our tactical priorities are, all before we take even one bit of action. So we talk about that plan and how we manage and evaluate hazards on scene. The second M in the COMMIT acronym for Leading Safer Teams is all about mutual respect. And this is where I share some video footage from my team in what is to date the toughest adventure race on earth. And we're in Ecuador. And on day three of this race, we're at the front of the pack with the best team in the world. And we discover that after running 75 miles at 14,000 feet elevation, we now have to climb a 19,700 foot active volcano in the middle of this race. So I was having a really tough time um, breathing and we discovered that my O2 sat in that hut at 15,000 feet was 71%. It was nuts. I was dying. I was blue. I looked like a Smurf. And my teammates and I had to make some difficult decisions because in that race, because we, the first two teams looked so bad, the race doctor decided that, you know what, as long as three people make it to this peak at 19,700 feet, we're going to allow people to stay at this hut for a penalty or get to 19, 18,000 feet and come back down for a two hour penalty versus a five hour penalty if you stay at the hut at 15,000 feet. So we had some tactical decisions to make. My teammates and I decided that they were gonna drag me up to 18,000 feet. <laughs> so we, we got our ropes together for glacier travel and they dragged me to 18,000 feet where I was thinking that I was gonna go back down. But what we discovered pretty quickly was that two of my teammates were having an even tougher time breathing than I was when they got to 18,000 feet. And the race doctor said that they had high altitude pulmonary edema and they had to go back down or they had to decide whether they should go back down or continue to climb up. But he suggested they go back down. So they had a tough decision to make. But out of respect for themselves, the course, the doctor, the team, they both decided to go back down and take a two hour penalty each for a total of four hours and I had to go up. So not only was there the respect that was given to me as a teammate to continue on up to go forward when I really thought I should be going back down, but they also respected the course and themselves enough to go back down even when they were the two strongest guys on the team. And interestingly enough, we actually won that race because they made the right decisions for their safety. They had enough respect for themselves. They had enough respect for me to send me to the top of the mountain. And to this date, it was the toughest race on earth and my team won because of that mutual respect. The I is your ability to innovate, adapt and overcome in the face of times of great challenge and change. And when the you know what has hit the fan, how do we get our teammates through that? And then the T is all about teamwork, you know, inspiring people to be better together than any individual could ever be alone. And the fact that we really do have a family on the job. We have responsibility to these folks. These are our teammates. This is our family. And that understanding that we have to get everybody across the finish line. We have to get everybody home safe every single day. That's what makes us a superstar teammate.